this video you're going to see how you can make your own camouflage using dye pigment. Now this video does presume a bit of knowledge about dyeing materials. Um, won't get into the details about what dyes to use on what type of fabric or anything. If you want to do this at home, either watch a bunch of videos and learn how to dye, or just do exactly what I'm going to be doing in the video. So let's get started. So yeah, first thing you want to start off with is just a plain white shirt. Um, make sure it's cotton, preferably have it washed first. So secondhand stores are often a great place to start. Just make sure you look at the fabric to make sure it's not gross. So get an old cauldron, one that you're not intending to use with food anymore, put some water in it, hit it to the stove, and bring it to boil. You'll also notice that glass jar of soda ash. You don't have to use soda ash if you don't have any. It just helps retain the colors, so the color will last longer. In another video, I'll show you how to make soda ash. It's incredibly easy and cheap, but if you buy a pre-made in the store, they're going to charge you about 400% plus tax. Once the water is boiling, add the soda ash. Once you've poured it in, return it to boil. Once it's boiling, add the garment. Then poke it with a stick and make sure all the soda ash gets absorbed into the fabric. Leave it like this for a couple minutes. Five minutes is fine. Maybe ten. Longer the better. While you're waiting for this, prep your next materials. You're going to need dye. I'm going to recommend Tintex, although I'm not sponsored in any way. It's just affordable and effective. And they've got a great color palette. I'm also using another dye, beige tan. Once you've added the dye, fold the fabric in any way you want to create the pattern you want. So because I'm trying to do old wood, I'm going to use a fan fold to try to duplicate the grain of wood. Obviously, only put the amount of fabric you want to dye in the cauldron with the dye. So here's the shirt after I did the first dye. As you can see, it came out kind of brown. Um, I want that brown to transition to my vest I wear. So that's why I did it along the shoulders as well as the waist. Now that I've got that browny transition, I'm going to move on to other colors to do the grain of the wood. Next, I'm gonna use a gray. And again, I bring the water to boil, add the dye, stir it around, and then return it to boil. In this case, I used marbles to duplicate the look of a knot. That's common, of course, in most wood. Once you add the marble, it's important to fold the fabric along the lines that are drawn by the marble. You'll understand if you do it. This is after the first dye of that gray. Unfortunately, the brown started to bleed, so the brown became a red. Don't worry, we'll fix that later. If you make a mistake, there's ways of hiding it. Next, I decided to add a darker gray. I used a fan fold again to duplicate the grain of the wood. As you can see, the knots are really starting to show nicely. This is after I added black. Black always makes it pop with a nice white t-shirt for a background. Just as a reminder, the shirt's still wet, so it'll look a little bit different once it's fully dry. But before we dry it out, I'm going to fix the brown. And here it is after I fix the brown. Looks a lot better. Can't wait to see what it looks like when it's fully dry. Oh, imagine that. There it is, all dry. I really like how this one turned out. It was my first time trying to duplicate the wood look with the use of marbles and fan folding. Every, anything before that was just experimental. 
If I were to do it again, I would probably add more browns. Make sure you use the stovetop boil method. Doing it this way only takes a half an hour to an hour tops. If it's your first time dyeing again, use double the amount of black, always. You want a very strong black. But if you're doing it this way, don't leave your garment in any longer than an hour. Again, I should say, this video presumes you have some basic knowledge about dyeing. I should say that this is the first time I'm seeing this pattern anywhere on YouTube. I was inspired by a lot of great artists that are on YouTube and elsewhere. If you like it, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, even better, share it with a friend. Let them know how they can do this, how you can make your own camouflage at home. Oh yeah, did I mention it's very cost effective? It is. Be sure to share your attempts at doing the old wood pattern. Let me know how it goes. All right, I better start overlaying this audio file. See you on the paintball field.